With Tyler Lockett finally returning to the practice field, I felt it was time to do a film update. For this video, I tracked his 66 targets from his 2016 season, and I looked at the general trends of his role in the Seahawks offense. Since I did this last offseason, his potential change in role was actually of more interest to me. Well, after studying his tape, his role was largely the same of what it was last year. He was used on a large portion of the Seahawks bubble screens. They aligned him in trips bunch and used him in a variety of motions to create mismatches in space. Versus the Panthers, he gained 40 yards on a quick bubble screen, attacking the field side of the formation. As a quick reminder, a bubble screen is where the blocks and design of the play is to the sideline, while a tunnel screen is a design screen to have the receiver cut back inside. The Seahawks tend to use more bubble than tunnel screens, and this is simply to stretch the defense horizontally. They do this to force a defense to cover them sideline to sideline and also open up running lanes whenever they use their inside zone running play. When Lockett wasn't running a design screen, he was used on hitches and go routes down the sideline. Versus the Rams, the Seahawks have 13 personnel on the field. This means that they have one running back, three tight ends, and a lone wide receiver on the outside. In this play, that wide receiver is Tyler Lockett. After the snap, there is a clear busted coverage on the trips tight end side in the formation. Luke Wilson is wide open on his seam route down the middle of the field. However, since Wilson sees Lockett getting inside leverage on his man, this opens the downfield throwing lane. If Lockett was pressed or the defender played with better leverage, Wilson would have moved on and probably would have seen the open tight end. He releases the ball and it's beautifully placed in a spot where Lockett can bring it in before the safety tackles him to the ground. If Lockett's delayed release and quickness were not on the same page as Wilson's read, then he wouldn't have been the recipient of this 35-yard throw. On another play versus the Eagles in Week 11, the Seahawks run a two-man concept off of play action. They leave eight men in the box to block any pass rush to set up the downfield throw. This is a classic West Coast concept that coaches like Jay Gruden and Kyle Shanahan like running to stretch the downfield safeties. After the snap, Doug Baldwin runs a go route, streaking up the middle of the field, while Tyler Lockett runs a deep over to the opposite sideline. Versus cover three, Baldwin's entire goal of this play is to distract the deep safety while dragging his cornerback away from the left sideline. Since he does that, Lockett now has a one-on-one -on -one matchup with his defender. Since his cover three, with three deep defenders, his cornerback is now out of position since he has outside leverage after the snap. Lockett uses his burst off the line of scrimmage to vertically push the defender out of his path. He then quickly cuts underneath, showing tight footwork to gain separation. Since the defender is now trailing, the best place for this pass is in stride to the receiver. Russell Wilson reads the leverage and delivers the pass perfectly for Lockett to catch it and round the corner for a 30-yard gain. Speaking of Wilson, due to his scrambling ability, this forces receivers like Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett to continue working their routes even when they aren't the first read. Later in the same Eagles match, Lockett runs a hitch route to the right sideline. Sitting at the 20-yard line, he is the outlet receiver for the quarterback. After seeing Wilson start to scramble, he bursts up the field and then turns back quickly in order to push his defender away for the throw. These type of plays and route adjustments were very common in this offense. It's clear that Lockett and Wilson are on the same page. While Lockett's season ended prematurely after breaking his leg, it's important to note that a large portion of his role was exactly the same as it was last year. Since making that video, I was really hoping that they were going to use him in a more diverse way. However, they have players like Doug Baldwin and Jimmy Graham, while they recently drafted Amar Darbo. This signals to me at least that his role and upside will stay relatively capped. As a former third round player who handles a lot of special teams work, this isn't a bad thing, but just note that this is the reason why he's not going to break a thousand receiving yards anytime soon. From a fantasy perspective, the limited targets and upside definitely impacts his value. In my opinion, he is a very low-end wide receiver and should only be used as a backup or should be drafted in leagues that value kickoff and punt yards as well. Over the next week or so, I'll be looking at Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris from the Broncos. 
That will most likely be my last video breakdown looking at 2016 game tape, so after that, I'll be moving on to some preseason film work. If you like this video or like the others on my channel, feel free to click the link to my Patreon account and leave a donation. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.